And now it is our turn, Nora, and it is happening now. For millennia, human beings have looked skyward and experienced a total solar eclipse, and now that moment comes to us. And we just noticed a few moments ago, it's begun. It has begun. If you put your glasses on, you can see the sun here in Indianapolis looks a bit like a ginger snappy with a little nibble out of the like corner. A bite, like a little bite. Just a little mouse, mouse bite. Everybody's here enjoying it. We're at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. More than 50,000 of our closest friends have gathered to watch this total eclipse of the heartland. I'll be with you for the next hour and a half. I'm Tony DeCopel. And I'm Nora O'Donnell. And we are right in the path of totality, where the moon's shadow will completely block the sun. And then it will turn day into night. I just got goosebumps saying I know. I, <laughs> I look at it, and a hush falls over me deep within this alignment of the sun and the moon. It's not just a rare celestial event. They've been waiting 800 years here in Indianapolis. It's also a rare social event. And for a few moments today, Americans all over the country in every walk of life will pause their normal routines, close that email browser, put their phones away, and come together to look upwards, skywards, and have a shared experience, a communal moment of wonder and excitement. Yeah, and so over the next 90 minutes, we're gonna share everything we know with you as the eclipse goes on in these different places. We'll share with you as it happens, and we will also bring you a sense of the experience because it's the science, but it's also the experience. Yeah, and people say it's not something you see, but really experience. Now, I'll give you some nuts and bolts. The path of totality enters the U.S. in Texas and stretches all the way to Maine and beyond. It is more than 100 miles wide, and that means it crosses part of 15 different states. And as you move away from that path of totality, the amount of the sun that's blocked decreases, but at least a partial eclipse will be visible everywhere in the continental U.S. If you can hear my voice, go outside, you will see it. About 31 million people, meanwhile, are very lucky. They live inside that path of totality. And another 150 million people more live within a short drive, 200 miles of that path. That's right. And you are looking now at live pictures of uh, the eclipse from Mazatlan, Mexico. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Wow. This is the first place where it is visible in North America, and they call that the corona, that little light that's around the side. And we're going to experiencing the total eclipse there in about three minutes and 45 seconds. Wow, they must be going crazy right now in Mazatlan, and we are waiting for it here in the U.S. It won't be long. As we mentioned, we're in Indianapolis, but we've got reporters all along that path, cameras as well, arrayed for every perspective on the path of totality. You're going to see the eclipse at every stage all across the country. As we mentioned, it's something that you don't really see, you experience. So let's talk about that experience. We're joined now by CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood and Dr. Lucien Walkowicz. She's an astronomer, an educator, and an artist based in Chicago. Bill, I'm going to start with you. You've both seen this before in 2017. We're newbies, right? Yeah, we're you newbies, it. yeah. I I've been told that experiencing a total solar eclipse is the most profound and disorientating experience short of taking an illegal substance that's possible. <laughs> what is it, Bill, about it? I would say maybe short of childbirth uh, for a father. Um, when I saw it for the first time, I thought I knew what I would see. You know, just another partial eclipse like I've seen in the past. It is nothing like that, uh, Tony. It's, it's otherworldly is my best way to describe it. It made such an impression on me. I made hotel reservations years in advance to come see this one. I didn't want to miss it. If you haven't ever seen Totality, find a way to do it because it is, it is incredible. Mm. Oh, wow. And, Doctor, what about the science of today? What are astronomers, scientists looking at to hope to learn today? Well, this eclipse is a really unique opportunity to learn about those outer layers of the sun, the corona, and that's the part of the sun that affects us the most. It creates something called space weather, which, you know, affects our atmosphere, creates beautiful phenomena like the northern lights, and so there will actually be NASA jets chasing the eclipse quite literally along the path to study the outer layer of the sun and how it affects our planet. I love that. You guys are going to be hanging out with us for the duration here, so we're going to have lots to talk about. But for now, I want to show off some of the cool graphics and equipment we have back in New York. My colleague, Nate Burleson, on The Morning Show has a look at the science behind a total eclipse. Take a look. All right, to make up for my FOMO, since I am stuck here in Times Square and not in the path of totality, we built a model solar system right here in the studio to explain what's going to happen. 
As the Earth rotates around the sun and the moon rotates around the Earth, they fall into alignment at least twice a year. Now, even though the sun's diameter is about 400 times larger than the moon's, a total solar eclipse where the moon completely covers the sun is possible because the sun is about 400 times farther away from Earth. Now, when you look at the sky, they both look about the same size. While the impact of the eclipse will be experienced across much of the country, the big show is the umbra, when the moon completely blocks the sun. That's the total eclipse. As the shadow of the moon travels across North America, we get the path of totality. It will go from Texas to Maine and will be, be between 108 and 122 miles wide. That's twice as wide as last time. Now, we all know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. The eclipse goes from west to east because you're actually watching the moon's shadow and orbit, not the Earth's. Outside of the umbra is the penumbra, or partial shadow. And as I said, it will cover most of the U.S. The farther away from the path, the moon will cover less of the sun. If you are only 30 miles from the path, you'll get what's called deep partiality. You'll see just a sliver of the sun with the sky darkening a bit. Here in New York City, we're at 90%. And if you are in the 75% area down here, only 75% of the sun will be covered. People north of the path of totality will see the bottom of the sun covered. People to the south will see the top of the sun covered. And nobody in the U.S. will see an eclipse that covers this much of the U.S. again until 2045. All right, Nate, thank you so much. That's a great explanation that Nate just gave us. Let's bring in now Bill and Lucianne again, because right now, well, actually, I think in like 30 seconds from now, totality in Mazatlan, Mexico, the wow. total eclipse happening there. You experienced it in 2017. What's it like? To see the corona, which you cannot see uh, unless the sun is completely blocked out. The corona is the outer atmosphere of the sun. It's millions of degrees hot. You see the details, and we're looking at this picture of the eclipse from Mazatlan right now, and you can see the corona around the edge. It's in totality or extraordinarily close to it. It's just a remarkable sight. Lucian, I, I was talking to somebody who's going to be joining us later, an amateur astronomer, who told me that part of what makes an eclipse so exciting is unlike a sporting event where we're on different teams, we're all on team sun and moon, right? <laughs> we, all, we all depend on them. And it's one thing to see the models and the charts and everything, and quite another to look up and witness both at the same right. time. Talk to me about the first time you experienced it and what you think people here behind me are going to be looking at. Oh yeah, the first time I saw it was in Carbondale in 2017 and I was absolutely blown away. You know, I had seen partial eclipses before and so I also thought I knew what I was going to see and I was really amazed by what a multi-sensory experience a total solar eclipse is. You know, you feel, you not only see the beautiful sight of the eclipse sun, but you feel that drop in temperature. You hear animals, you know, like make noise because they think it's dawn again um, or twilight. And it really is just a, an incredible full body experience to see this amazing event. Oof. There are so many Americans that will have this experience today, whether the 30 million in the total path, another 150 near it. But of course, one of the X factors is the weather and crowds are gathered in locations all over the country to watch this eclipse. So to talk about the weather where you are and if cloud cover is an issue or whether ruin your experience, let's bring in CBS Philadelphia Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly. All right, Bill, how's the weather looking? Well, it's looking really good for a lot of places, and you're exactly right. Clouds make all the difference in the world. In fact, we're showing you this live from Philadelphia. This is looking out over Center City where we have some clouds, and that's indicative of what we're seeing over Pennsylvania and New York. What you're looking at now on our grand map here are these temperatures. And right now, currently, it's quite comfortable, 70s and 80s. This dark line, by the way, is that line of totality. Notice it's a little cooler in Rochester. Temperatures are at 60, and that is because of the clouds. So let's show you that. What we've done is we put together this map that has the totality on it, and that is this ring right here. As I put this into motion, if you see the shadowing behind it, the dark, 
that means you're going to see totality. And look how it clears up by the time you get into Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, where you guys are in Indiana. That is looking great. We get into Ohio looking pretty good, but then eastern Ohio through Pennsylvania, New York, we do have these clouds that are around, but then it clears out through sections of Massachusetts and Maine. So 31.6 million people, a vast majority have great viewing, a couple of trouble spots here and there, but all in, guys, I think it's a great day for viewing that eclipse. And we're going to be covering uh, not only the weather, but what you've been seeing on the right-hand side of your screen, the corona, the sun's performance when we come back. But we're going to tuck in a quick break now.